Hello, my name's Gary Hammond from Magenta PLM. Uh, I'm going to take you through a tutorial on how to use the Electro Design Wizard that's built into NX um, based on the part that we have on the screen. Uh, we're going to generate uh, two electrodes from, uh, from this part. Uh, the first one will be looking at a cavity for uh, these, uh, these areas around here and also where we have the three the three fingers poking down into the component so we'll we'll create um, uh, two e electrodes based on that geometry so st start with uh, we are fire up at electro design which gives us this toolbar uh, this toolbar has all of the uh, functions necessary to generate quite complex um, electrodes and all of the other uh, documentation that's wrapped around it. So I'm going to start off by initializing a project and uh, we're just going to tell it where we want to uh, uh, to save this data which I'll uh, put into uh, uh, into this folder and we'll give the project a name of 1000 and then we'll just specify the direction that the machine uh, is working in so uh, we're going to do some uh, uh, electro discharge electro uh, discharge machining so the z-axis is uh, is pointing to the direction of the machine uh, we want the uh, the center of that coordinate system based uh, on the center of that face there so uh, that will kick us off and uh, start the process off. So behind the scenes what it's created for us, uh, it's created us an assembly. Uh, the original saw part is here. We've got our own working version of that, so it's a, it's, it's a copy effectively, an associative copy of all of the surfaces. Uh, this allows us to go in there and tidy things up if, uh, if required, uh, but in this case uh, we, we don't need to. So uh, next uh, part of the process is to uh, select the manufacturing geometry. As I said, we're going to use EDM uh, for machining these uh, these faces. So I'll just create a new group, and to that group, I'm going to select a whole set of faces. I'll just zoom up on there, uh, grab that bunch there, and also that surface. So that's our first our first set of surfaces. So I'll create a new group. This is for the second electrode. And uh, for this, I'm going to uh, tangent select uh, a bunch of surfaces in and around this area here. So that should do us. Uh, we don't need any more surfaces than uh, than that. And that creates our second uh, our second group of surfaces that we're going to use um, for our electrodes. Uh, okay, uh, we've got a number of different automated tools that we can use for generating uh, the electrodes. I'm going to start by using one called Trim Solid and for this I'm going to select uh, this face down here which gives me a, a block and we'll extend the block by picking another set of surfaces at the other end. Uh, we've got a bounding box clearance, this is the uh, the area around the surfaces that we've uh, uh, selected. So I'm going to give it a 2mm uh, clearance zone around there, as you see that, that increased. And uh, then we're going to, just going to go and edit the height. So we can do that by clicking this icon and then just dragging the height up until we get to an appropriate appropriate distance, which yeah, 45 should do us. And OK to that. OK, so I'm just going to hide that one and uh, if I just show that on its own you can see the, the geometry that it's created. So it's taken that bottom surface, imparted uh, the shape onto uh, the geometry that we've, um, that we've selected. OK, going back to uh, this component. Right. Uh, the next tool I'm going to use is called Replace Solid. Uh, this allows me to uh, pick faces off the off the part, and based on those faces, it then generates a block in and around 
uh, the surfaces that we generated. Uh, just to turn that option off there and as you can see based on the surfaces it intersects those and creates a, a shape that will um, allow us to um, machine these, these surfaces. So I'm just going to edit the bounding box because I'd, I'd like to make them slightly larger so we're going to increase them in this direction by 2 at the back by 2 millimeters, and then pull that top surface up so it clears uh, the uh, the mid plane there so we, we won't uh, come down and clash okay and we'll apply that so we've got uh, another two of these to do so let's go and pick those surfaces and once again we just turn off uh, these options I can pick the surfaces off the previous uh, the previous uh, electrode or finger and um, what that will do it will then use those faces as the limiting distance for the uh, for the new electrode that we are just uh, creating here to apply to that one and then lastly repeat the process just about here So there we have it. Right, so there's our, our three uh, fingers pointing down into the slots. Right, the, uh, the next part of the process is to uh, design a blank. Uh, this is very straightforward. Uh, we just choose the, uh, the fingers and, and then as we work our way through the, uh, through the design, uh, the centroid of the of the block that's going to be generated will uh, will auto auto position itself. If we wanted to be uh, specific about this location, we, we can do. We, we can um, specify the orientation and location. Um, for this particular part, we can just hit apply there, and NX will create a block that uh, then links all of those uh, all of those fingers together going to return the initial block back onto the screen and we can do the same thing on here. Uh, so all we need to do there is just select it and it will auto generate a block on the top for us like so. Uh, while we've been doing that uh, behind the scenes NX has created another two parts and added these to our assembly uh, as you can see here the geometry is highlighting on the screen. Uh, next is to add a holder, a, uh, an electrode fixture holder if you want to, uh, to call it that. Uh, we've got a number of different holders that uh, out of the box are supplied with NX. You can create your own and add them to the library. Uh, for this particular presentation I'm going to take the ER009222 and uh, We've got a couple of different sizes there for this. Uh, the 51 millimeter should be okay uh, for uh, uh, for our particular design. So select the component, make sure that uh, uh, it's centered on the top of that face. Pick apply, and that then gets added into our into our design. Uh, I can pick the second uh, the second component. should be uh, this block here, centre of the face, that one there, and also pick apply. Okay, so we've got our, our two holders. Once again, revisiting the assembly structure, it's now added this sub-assembly with uh, these various components located within it. So very quickly we've, we've managed to generate our electrodes. Uh, created a block so that we can hold them with uh, with the fixtures. Okay, so moving back to the top level assembly. Uh, next process on from here would be to um, generate some drawings. So let's go ahead and do that. Uh, so these are the two 
uh, the two electrodes that we've got to create the drawings of and it comes supplied with some pre-defined templates for laying out the drawing uh, for this particular presentation I'm going to use uh, this one here uh, the drawing is going to be a standalone drawing which uh, allows us to have a separate file for the drawing and uh, a separate file for uh, for the tool assembly uh, we could create it internally to the part but uh, uh, for this particular presentation I'm going to go down the master model route okay so that's uh, that's generated that we'll do that process one more time for the uh, for the other blank and if we go and revisit the uh, if we go and revisit the drawings now, which we can do, and let's have a look at those. So these are what have been laid out. So we get some auto dimensions generated off of the off of the geometry. These are auto generated from uh, the two mil clearance of uh, of the upstands that we selected originally. Uh, some more dimensions over here. I'll just tidy these up. Uh, very quickly draw that one down there Let's pull these out to the side and align them uh, correctly Okay, so uh, uh, over here we've got uh, a number of views. I'll just tidy these up and move these around a bit. Uh, we'll also move that table down slightly, pop them down there. Uh, this table itself, uh, if we'd had multiple instances of uh, this, uh, this particular electrode in different locations on the component, then this would auto populate itself with uh, the XYZ locations of that. Uh, of, it, of their locations. Okay, so that's uh, this drawing. If we go and revisit the uh, the second drawing that we created, uh, you can see uh, we've got a similar type of thing going on here. So I just need to move this view. Let's rejig these because uh, it's an automatic process. It's 50/50 whether or not these would be placed in the right location. And then again, I could just go in here and tidy up some of the dimension locations. I might do them all. You see me do this already. Okay, so there's our drawing. Uh, if we wanted to create a, a sectional view on this component, it's very straightforward to do. Let's move some of these dimensions down. And delete a couple of these. Okay, get rid of that one. There we go. So, if I wanted to create a section view on here, just right click, create, add a section view. Uh, we'll add, add that going through uh, this uh, this end. So, we'll pull, pull the view off in this direction. So, I'll just lock the alignment and then go off and have a look at the, uh, the section view tool. So in here I can rotate the uh, the view around. At the moment we're just viewing this in wireframe mode. We could uh, view it in shaded. So once I'm happy with the orientation of that, I can then lock that and then go OK and then just place my view. So for the boundary, I might just want to um, reset that boundary. So I'll have a manual rectangle just around this this area here. And drop that there. So as you can see, uh, just hide that. As you can see there, we have uh, the insert going into the component. Okay, 
So going back to uh, the assembly, so let's just jump back uh, back there and get back to modeling. Bills of materials. So just clicking on the bill of material command, uh, we can see that we've got, or we require uh, a one inch by two inch block of copper for this particular electrode and a two and a half by one inch block for this particular electrode and also we need uh, uh, two of these components here to the sub assemblies so that would uh, that would do us for our particular design so that uh, concludes my presentation this afternoon so during uh, this short demonstration we've been through the process of selecting a part selecting surfaces that we want to generate the electrodes from creating some blanks um, that include the surfaces that uh, we, we're going to spark. Uh, from there we've also generated uh, the drawings and, and the bill of materials. So thank you for your time. Uh, my name is Gary Hammond of Magenta PLM 